Welcome back, Wastelanders. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. For the next three episodes, we're going to be covering my favorite thing in Fallout 4, settlements. In part one of this video, we'll be going over the basics. Part two will cover how to establish a productive settlement. And four, a settlement advantage. I will try to answer the basic questions about settlements in this video and give you five key tips to start off right. First, what are settlements? What's the purpose? How can they benefit me? Let's get started. Here's a couple of sample videos for settlements I've created over various Fallout 4 playthroughs. They're in a nutshell your customizable village that can grow, be destroyed, or left to do nothing, all determined by you, the player. To unlock a settlement, typically you'll need to go through Preston and the Minutemen. You generally need to free them, destroy a local group, or rescue someone. Once done, you unlock a workbench will allow you to start to build. The purpose of settlements are simple. Basically, it's an absolutely freakishly cool housing system. It allows you to customize a location that can be profitable in both terms of resources and caps, though it will be needed to defend it. The first thing I want to show you is the settlement user interface and then show you how I go about starting a basic settlement. Once you get to your workstation, you're going to click a button that's going to open up this screen. We're going to go top to bottom, left to right, and explain some of the things I didn't understand about settlements early on. Number one is people. When it says people, this can be robots or anyone for that matter. Now you get more people by building a recruitment radio beacon. Now it's very valuable to get more people into your settlements. It means more caps for you later on and or resources. The thing to know about people is when you're establishing a supply line, the first major tip I can give you is send one away for the supply line, especially if you have that Charisma 6 perk, uh, Charismatic Leader. It's very, very important to get that supply line established because then you can use uh, resources from your other settlements to build that radio beacon and power it up. But notice that two people, some of them can be sent away, some of them cannot, especially if you establish some key character settlements. Number two is food. Now food is very, very important early on. You want your food to be equal to the number of people. Ideally, you want it to be double. The more food you have, the more likely you are to get attacked by other little crazy people around. You could get attacked by raiders, gunners, super mutants, and others. The thing about food though, is once you get supply lines set up, you can have other establishments do the majority of the food. In fact, on my playthroughs, I have one place that does my water, one place that does my food, and so all the other settlements don't need to have all the same things going. Keep that in mind for when you get the big picture. Number three, water. It's kind of the same thing as food. You want to have it equal to the number of people and or double if you have the available space and or resources. Also, if you have a supply line set up, you can pump in water using provisioners. So early on, match it to the number of people. Power. Power is not a must. You notice that it's at zero. The only time this changes into the red is if you have something that requires power that's not getting it. But typically speaking, power is not needed at almost every settlement. Defense, well, defense wins championships and or protects you. You will need defense. So I like to use the gun turrets and use my settlers specifically to do things for me, which I'll show you in a little bit. But you can right away set up a defensive turret or a defensive uh, station for your settlers to operate and get some defense. Like I said, you want to match your defensive score with your food. The higher the food, the higher you're going to have. So try to have 7 to 10 defense, if not 15 early on. Beds. You need beds per the number of people. And the best tip I can give you right away when you're establishing a settlement, build to grow. Especially if you have a radio beacon, the last thing you want to do is have to come back and make some beds when your settlers are already nestled in their little area. So make five or six beds to start. That way you don't have to come back all the time. Happiness, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's what your settlers need to survive. Do they have enough food, water, defense, beds, and then also other things will affect this as well, such as building clothing stores, um, giving them shelter above their beds is very, very important. But generally speaking, is, is everything in the green, this will increase. Size. Now, I didn't know what the heck this meant. This is not the size of villagers, but the size of your materials. So if you build 6,000 walls, there's a limit to it. So you can't have this huge, booming metropolis. So you're going to try to build something off of an available building. That's your best bet to take advantage of the size. 
And then down below here, you have, well, your building materials. You work left to right, go back and forward, and it selects what you have. Now, if you're out of something like crystal in this particular image, you can hit the Q button to tag it for a search. That way, when you put your mouse over, let's say you're in a raider zone and you're trying to loot something, if it's valuable, it'll have that little um, microscope or magnifying glass on it. So you know I should loot this. That's basic, the basic UI. Okay, so now that we got our settlement established, guess what? We can start building. Before we get started, let's take a look at the settlement and see what we have to build around. You notice here we got some planty plants, a lot of food, a couple mattresses in here, a workstation, a flying cow. Let's milk some of them udders. No jokes in the comments. Just kidding, feel free. And here's our little love shack. Oh, a little candle. Someone's getting romantic. Chair, new cola bottle, loot, yoink. Water stuff, junk, junk, junk. Okay, so we can build around this since the workshop is here, protecting these guys, or you can start a little thing over here. More cost effective would probably just to be to set up walls around this with some turrets. But first things first, let's hit our little key, huh? We have two settlement people. One is a settler, two is a settler. So these people aren't tied down to the settlement. So let's set up a supply line right away to Sanctuary Hills. Now, let's get the dull rolling in here with the recruitment radio beacon, keeping it right by all of this food. Do to do. Now hopefully we can power it. And we can power it luckily. Let's turn it so it looks nice and symmetrical. Yeah, symmetry kids, didn't know I knew that. Get them recruits coming in, baby, because we're going to build some stores very, very soon when we can. So while we're doing that, we're going to loot all this junk because it, guess what? It goes right into our workshop. We're going to take this water dude and make it closer. Why? Protection. Protection. Keep it close. If you're not going to have 20 settlers defend in a huge spread out area, we can always add and expand later. Come here, rock. Dang. Am I playing Minecraft or am I playing Fallout? I don't know, but it's fun. Give me different concrete, dog. Give me that wood board, no. Get out of here, Brahmin cow thing. Okay, so now that we got this, we got our love shack. The entrance is on here, so we're gonna need to protect that angle and keep all of our little crazy cozy settlers in here. So let's get to building. Okay, now that we have a nice little enclosed area, it's time to take care of the basic needs of these settlers. Defense, power, food, and give them some beds to expand. Okay, so what I like to do is set up my defensive structures in the corner areas. And also I like the tall ones since I go ahead and use these big old walls. So I put them in the corner, why? Good old military, got a lot of wide viewing angle. Remember, one person can access three of these suckers. So let's go ahead. No, you're not going there. You're going right here. Okay. So now we got this fence up. We need one more tower here. If we can do it where the rocks are. Yes, we can. Okay. So now we got that. We also need some structures. What I like is a nice structure here. The prefabbed metal. And you go all the way down here to what is it called wall and roof you can do a lot of these and it fits a lot and a lot a lot of people in them so as you can see it's kind of junky built on top of it but it still works so what i do is i go to here and i want this thing to expand while i'm doing missions and not have to come back here and build a bunch of different stuff right so what i do is i put these mattresses what i like to call nut to butt get them as close as you possibly can do to do so we're gonna have beds galore. It's gonna be a big old slumber party here. Everyone's gonna get to know each other very well. Personal body orders, everything. It's fine, kids. It's, yeah, it's like boot camp all over again, but you get to live this way for the rest of your life. Not so much fun. There we go. So now we have 10 beds that are secured and we're gonna go ahead and still increase the defense just a little bit more because people will come and screw with these people. So I like to build turrets as well, the machine gun turrets. 
There's something kind of cool you can do with wood structures. If you go to miscellaneous, you have to jump up in the air a couple times so you can build a what's called a bridge. Once you build the bridge, you can actually put a structure on it. You can put the machine gun turrets on it. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. And of course, I don't have a circuit to use. But if I did, you actually literally jump up here and you can put one of them suckers up there. You can do the same over here and have basically 360 degrees of coverage. So these little stupid raiders, even if they can get in right here, which they can't, they're going to get murked. And we have our controlled access point right here. So we're going to want a lot of defense on that. Power we don't really need about, but water, we can step that game up a little bit. Remember, water and or food needs to go by each other, or it's likely that it's going to go by each other. Why? It takes dirt. Dirt to dirt, dirt, dirt to dirt. So I am networked or connected via the whatever system. What's it called? I'm new to this game. What's it called? Let's go try to send someone there. They'll tell me. Supply line. So we're connected during a supply line, but still for some reason, it doesn't like to use all the food and water and it kind of takes their happiness down. So for whatever reason, I still like to do that. Also, uh, you can get a scavenger thing going as well, which settlers that are idle will start to use right away, which is very handy, especially if it's going to expand. Last thing you wanna do when you're getting all these settlements started is to have to come back all the time and rebuild stuff. So we get the scavenging station. We have one person on defense, looks like one on food and a couple idle tater tots and one we sent off to do something. So let's see if we can't find our idle tater tots. Look at her red door, that's not obvious. Come here, where's the love shack? The people, the two people sleeping here are screwed. Where do two people go? You better not be out milking that cow. I saw you earlier. It was weird. I wasn't going to say anything. Now you're on camera. Oh, look at this person. What's he doing? Nothing useful. Looking at dead roaches. Come here, you. Da -da -da. So now we have to walk back. And usually this is where I tell a story. And it's the story is how to get underneath uh, a bug wall. Good story, huh? Okay, let's get him on scavenging. Resources now assigned and you go back and put your map over it. So we got some resources coming in food We got four people tons of water decent defense tons of beds One farmer one defense and one person doing the supply line So this will be able to expand quite a bit and once it does we will go back and assign more people to food Because food can take six six little things per one person three little defensive turrets per one person Everything else we're going to put on scavenging. Um, and then this is our first little settlement that we've liberated. On to more and more settlements and elaborate, more detailed layouts. But this thing, it's going to start generating this income here shortly once we get the stores unlocked. Bye.